In this lesson, we'll use the new Webflow and Spline integration to animate our character using Webflow interactions. In the Spline library, let's go to Character and we'll search for the Spidey project and open it up. So let's turn on Auto Zoom so our entire scene will resize based on the size of our screen, like so. We'll also want to animate Spidey's head, so let's open our Spider-Man layer and we'll select all the elements that make up his head and hit Command G to group them. We'll rename our group to be head. And if we try and rotate this right now, it's rotating from the center of his head, but we want the origin point to be the bottom of his neck. So we'll hold the command and option key and click on the head layer. And then we're allowed to adjust this origin point by just dragging it down and maybe dragging it over a little bit. And then I'll hold the option key and click off to the side and drag to rotate and maybe just move this origin point forward a little bit and maybe down a little more. So now if we click off and then select the whole head again, now we can rotate it and it's rotating from that point like so. We're also gonna grab this entire background layer, the web, and we'll just delete it so we don't have anything else in our background. We'll hit export and go to play settings and we'll turn logo off, background color off, disable the orbit, pan, and zoom controls, and then we'll publish our URL. And then to bring this over to Webflow, we'll head over to Viewer, and we'll hit the Copy Embed, and we'll basically just only interested in this second URL here. This is the one we need for Webflow. So in Webflow, let's add a spline scene, and we'll paste in the URL to our scene here. We're gonna give this scene a class of spline, and we'll give it a height of 100 VH, so it covers the screen height. Let's drag it above our hero section and we want it to stay with us while we scroll past all these sections. So let's give it a position of sticky zero pixels to the top so it stays with us while we scroll. We'll want the hero section to start at the top of the spline scene. So with the hero selected, let's give it some margin top of negative 100 VH to pull it up by a full screen height. We'll also want this about section to be on top of the spline scene so if that's selected, let's give it a position of relative to make sure it's on top. Then we'll create the head bob interaction. So with the spline selected, let's head to the interactions tab. We'll create a page trigger that triggers on page load and we'll start a new animation here. We'll create our animation and we'll call this something like head move. So with the spline selected, we're gonna add an action of spline to it. And within this spline scene, we can choose an object we want to animate. So for our object, we're going to select the entire head group that we created in spline. We'll have this rotate on the X to 0 0.2 degrees. This can happen over 0.7 seconds, and we'll give it an ease of out sign. Then let's go ahead and duplicate this step here. And for the next one, we'll have it rotate back to 0 degrees. So it bobs forwards and backwards. Then we can set this whole interaction to loop. And now if we preview this, we should notice our character's head animating. We'll also wanna set up our scroll interaction and this container is gonna be the trigger for that. Whenever the container is scrolling in view, that's when we'll animate our character. So with the container selected, let's create an element trigger of while scrolling in view. And we'll start an animation here and we'll create a new animation. We'll call this scroll. So let's go ahead and select our target, which is the whole spline scene, and we'll add an action here of spline to it. Within this scene, the object that we want to animate is going to be the entire Spider-Man group. And for his starting value, we'll be using a Y transform of zero, Z transform of zero, uh, X rotate, and Y rotate all of zero. Then for the end state here, we'll select the entire Spider-Man object again, and then on the Y, we'll basically pull him up some, maybe negative 220. And then on the Z, we'll pull him closer to the camera by something like positive 210. And then on the X, we'll just rotate him negative 0 0.2 degrees or maybe positive 0 0.2. So his head's a little bit closer to the camera. And then for the Y, we want him to completely spin around and make a full rotation here. So we'll do something like negative 6.5, and that'll be the end state. So now if we turn on live preview, this is his starting point. And then as we scroll, we're completely animating him like so. 
So this is looking great. And the last thing we'll want to do is create an interaction when we hover this button that rotates his cap. So let's create an element trigger of mouse hover on the button. And then we'll say on hover, start an animation, and we'll create a new action here. We'll call this something like hover in. And then let's select our target, which is the spline. We'll add an action of spline to this. And within the scene, we're going to go ahead and grab the cap. We're going to want to rotate it on the Y. And let's rotate it something like 3 degrees. This can happen over 0.8 seconds. And for the ease, let's do something like out court. And let's go ahead and save this. And for the hover out, we'll start an animation. And we'll just duplicate our hover in. So we can open that second one up. And we can go ahead and rename this to be hover out. And when we hover out, we're just going to animate it back to a rotate of zero for the cap. So now if we save this and we preview, we should have everything set up now, all the way from our scroll interactions to the head bobbing and even the button hover is all set up and good to go. The spline integration is just one of the amazing features released at WebflowConf. Check out this next video on variables that are finally native to Webflow.